Hello and welcome to another Explorer video. The format as well as Pioneer have been shaken up recently since the bannings of Amalia and Sorin, taking out two of the most popular decks, so I thought it would be a good time to revisit the format and take a look at this blue-red creativity deck, which I never got to play with World Spine Worm and Xanagos before, since they weren't available on Arena back when I tried it at first. And the combo is very simple, we simply need two creatures and or artifacts to target with creativity for x equals 2, we'll blow them up, go through the deck, until we hit a creature or artifact and put them on the battlefield for free and the only creatures or artifacts we can hit in this deck are World Spine Worm and a Xanagos God of Revels. We're not going to turn Xanagos into a creature in this build but we just need the ability saying at the beginning of combat on our turn another target creature we control gains haste and plus x plus x until end of turn where x is that creature's power. And how about a 15 powered World Spine Worm also has Trample so we can essentially attack with a 30 powered Trampler with haste right away and then if the worm were to die somehow it still leaves behind three 5-5 five, five trampling worm tokens and if it's put into a graveyard from anywhere we get to shuffle it back into its owner's library normally a way to prevent the worm from being reanimated but in this case it's actually an advantage since we can maybe discard the worm to an effect like fable of the mirror breaker and then instead of being left in the graveyard we can shuffle it back where we can once again find it with our indomitable creativity now Xenagos we don't want to discard since it's not going to get shuffled back, but since it's only a single green to cast, we can easily use a treasure token to hard cast it, or we can still put it on the bottom of our deck if we cast a Volcanic Spite, and then we get to put any card on the bottom in addition to drawing a card. So that's the combo in a nutshell, and then it's kind of built into this blue-red control deck that has access to plenty of spot removal and counter spells to interact with the opponent until we're ready to combo off. The early game includes some burn spells, like Fiery Impulse can potentially deal 3 to a creature if we have Spell Mastery enabled, and then a Torture Tower can also target Planeswalkers and will exile anything that dies to it, and that's pretty important now that Arclight Phoenix decks are probably going to rise in popularity, so being able to exile a Phoenix for good is quite helpful. Plus we also have lots of tokens we can sacrifice to bargain if we need to deal 3 damage, and then we also get to Scry 1. Then at 2 mana we've got a Deduce as an excellent way to draw a card and leave behind a clue token, as something we can eventually target with our creativity. Then we've got the new Phantom Interference as a fine 2 mana counter spell, but we can also potentially pay additional mana to make a Spirit token, which can yet again be something we target with our creativity, or can just give us additional pressure in those longer games. And then we've got a 1 of Negate for opposing non-creature spells, and then we mentioned Volcanic Spite dealing 3 damage, and can also put one of our combo pieces back on the bottom and draw, or just improve our hand in general. And then a Shark Typhoon can be cycled, ideally for at least x equals 1, so we get the 1-1 one, one Shark token on the battlefield as something else we can potentially target with our creativity, but it can also be a backup plan in case the combo somehow doesn't work out, we can still cast the 6 mana enchantment and take over with our Shark tokens. And then at 3 mana we get to play with Fable of the Mirror Breaker, one of the main draws to this strategy, as this card kind of does it all, making a Shaman that makes more treasure tokens, gives us plenty of things to target with creativity, and eventually the Reflection of Kiki Jiki we can also target, and then we get to sculpt our hand on the second chapter as well. And then we've got Anger of the Gods as a sweeper against aggro, exiling creatures once again useful against Arclight Phoenix decks. Then we've got a one of Prismari Command as a way to draw and discard, maybe make some treasure tokens or deal 2 damage, can also destroy an artifact, so it's quite flexible. And then a big score can potentially set up the win on turn 5, as we get to discard and draw 2, make 2 treasure tokens. So if we don't have any other tokens whatsoever, going turn 4 big score into a turn 5 creativity for x equals 2 is enough to set up the combo, so this card is also very useful. And then I'm also trying a one-off dig through time to maybe delve those cards in the graveyard to make use of them, and go digging for whatever combo pieces we need. And then the combo pieces are just for creativity, Worm and Xanagos, with plenty of ways to discard them or put them on the bottom. And then a mana base needs to be heavily focused on red mana for the triple red on creativity, but we've got mostly blue red dual lands, so we can also cast our blue interaction. And then a few more utility lands here, the channel lands, Ottawara to bounce stuff, and Crucible can make a pair of 1 ones, can also be something to target with our creativity. And then we've got both Fountain Port, a new addition from Bloomborough, which can make fish tokens or treasure tokens, and can also sacrifice tokens to draw, so it's also quite flexible. And then a Mirex can make might tokens. This one doesn't cost life, unlike the fish tokens, but at least the fish tokens can block, so they both have their advantages. Mirex can also make colored mana the same turn we played it. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. We have a hand that's 
is relying pretty heavily on Fable, so if they discard it or counter it somehow, we could be in trouble, especially with two colorless sources. But I think I still try it. We have the early torture tower. Take out the elf. And then... Yeah, hope to find some more red sources. Another creativity is awkward. So I'll hang on to Mirax since that might still make colored mana in a future turn. Opponent with a Jada, so an angel deck. Alright, let's play Fable and get rid of some of these creativities. Now the problem with the angel deck is that if they gain enough life, then attacking them with a 30 power to World Spine Worm doesn't necessarily win the game. And uh, Xenagos we cannot discard, but we can potentially cast it with our treasures. So, Shaman attacks. Happy if it trades, actually. And then I think we just cast Xenagos. And then next turn, if I draw a red source, I just need to creativity for x equals 1 to win the game. Righteous Valkyrie doesn't stop that. Although, sadly, our red source comes into play tapped here, so we'll have to wait one more turn. Although, at least we have Odawara for a bit of interaction. I can attack with a 4-4 Reflection, but that doesn't really accomplish much. They might take it, actually. Although, if they double block and we lose the Reflection, then I don't currently have a target for creativity. Although, I guess we could make one with Mirex. So, yeah, let's attack. Opponent takes it. And then the most likely scenario is that we bounce Valkyrie in response to the opponent playing an Angel. If they have collected company at instant speed, things might get a little tricky. Right, Overseer, so yeah, let's just bounce Valkyrie. And then we should be able to untap and just win. This way our opponent doesn't gain more life. And I don't expect any removal for the Reflection, necessarily. Another Jada, just to put two plus one counters on it. So X equals one, goodbye Reflection. And get our only remaining target. And attack for 30. So yeah, even if we draw Xenagos, we can still potentially hard cast it. And then uh, the World Spine Worm can be discarded in various ways as well. Okay, we're on the draw. We have lots of card draw, token makers, not a whole lot of creature removal, just a negate for interaction. So on the draw, I think this is going to be a little too slow. All right, this is better. And then... Do I keep both fables or do I keep both removal spells is the question. Against counter spells or discard, I prefer double fable. Against aggro, I'll prefer double... Removal. I think I'll keep the double fable when in doubt. Alright, Heartfire Hero. At least Torture Tower is a clean answer to it. So we'll wait and see if they try and pump it up. Swiss Spear. It's like we're playing standard. No blocks. And our opponent couldn't resist, so... Get a nice 2 for 1 without taking any additional damage. But yeah, in hindsight, having the extra removal instead of Fable would have been nice. Now we're kind of at the mercy of the opponent. Their adventure also fizzled, so no Rimrock Knight to worry about. So turn 3 Fable, turn 4 Fable, turn 5 Creativity for the win, hopefully, is the plan. If we're not dead by then. Opponents already emptied their hands, so that's impressive. Secure the critics. So we're at 10, facing 3 damage per turn at least. So 
I'll be happy enough to trade away the uh, Fable token. I guess this sort of implies that they maybe didn't draw another threat. I guess it could be another creature's second main. So what if I take it, next turn I attack, get a treasure, can creativity for two using the treasure, but then I won't have two targets, so yeah, it's not like we can already combo next turn. So with a big score in hand, I think it's safe enough to just trade here. My opponent found another Heartfire hero. So what do I want to get rid of? At this point, maybe nothing, or I guess just a fable. That way I can big score, make two treasures, and then have five mana to combo kill. There's not much our opponent can top deck here that would kill me. So even taking two off steam vents is not a problem. Alright, so we can take two now, or we can play Mirex. And then next turn we'll still have triple red. I guess this way we take one more damage from Shivan Reef, so maybe it was still better to play the Steam Vents right away. So we take two. I guess with our Reflection of Kiki Jiki coming in, I could also target my creature with the creativity, but then we potentially run into an opposing removal spell. So much safer to target our treasures. Xenagos and World Spine Worm. And that should do it. Awesome. So yeah, the early removal spell definitely saved us this game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. We have what looks like a keeper. Put on blue whites. We'll uh, keep up the juice and Volcanic Spite. And a Gaze, so it is a graveyard deck of sorts. We'll see which variety. Could be maybe a Monastery Mentor deck like we've seen in Standard. Pass a turn, can sack or clue. Could technically still sacrifice it to a torture tower for bargain if needed. But it's got another prankster. And yeah, now we see Hulking Metamorph, so it is the Abuelo's Awakening combo deck, presumably, like we've also seen in standard. So if opponent gets to four mana with Metamorph and Aragdos joins up in graveyard, they can win the game. So finding a counter spell would be nice. Although I suppose instant speed removal is also a way to mess with the opponent's combo. So that might still uh, be good enough. So we just don't want to tap out. Since we can take out the 1 1, Aragdos joins up and uh, prevent the opponent from fully going off. And yeah, there's the legendary enchantment. Goes for a faithful mending. So let's see if they have the Awakening here. They may have their own counter spells, or maybe Grand Abolisher to play in the same turn they try and combo. So it's not like I can just sit here with instant speed removal and uh, assume I'll necessarily win. It looks like they're maybe thinking about it, but they decided to pass it back. Okay, so now we can probably tap out for Fable. And then still have at least one removal spell available. And then next turn, there's a small chance we can combo. And there we see how Will's Awakening. Their opponent has it in hand. If they have a spell pierce as well, then we lose. 
Haven't seen any in graveyard yet, at least. Alright, so there's Awakening. Put on doing it for x equals 1. So let me go full control just in case. So in response to the trigger, we now need to deal 2 damage. And uh, I guess we'll hang on to the Volcanic Spite in case I draw into one of the combo pieces. So that's dealt with. Now joins up still triggers, so they get to return a 9-9 Metamorph, which isn't bad. But at least it doesn't kill us on the spot. And yeah, we drew Xenagos, which we don't want to discard, but we do want to put back with Volcanic Spite. And then probably fine to discard two lands to discount Dig Through Time. And found a pair of Interferences, so good to have as well. Alright, so how many cards in Graveyard? Four, so this can cost four mana. Yeah, I don't know if it's worth it to attack with a Shaman. We maybe take the hit from Metamorph, attack back next turn to make a treasure. We'll have the Reflection to jump with as well. And then for now just pass a turn. Alternatively, what I could do is attack with the Shaman to then cast Xenagos, but then we would be mostly shield down, so yeah, that doesn't seem like a great idea. So we'll pass. So I could still technically Volcanic Spite and then dig through time, allowing me to put back Xenagos, and then next turn I could Creativity for two, targeting my two creatures potentially. Opponent casting the Prankster, that's fine. We also exiled Ragdos joins up, which is also relevant since now they'll need another copy in the graveyard, although they already do. Double Prankster. Could make a difference if they're attacking in chunks of 9 damage. These can maybe add up to 20. But for now I'll take it. And then we can Volcanic Spy the Prankster end of turn maybe. And then just double checking, but yeah, we should be able to dig through time afterwards. Another Volcanic Spite. And what do we find? Want an untapped land. And then negate could be alright. Although, yeah, if I want to go for the combo next turn, I'm not going to have enough mana to keep up a counter spell. Not sure if our opponent is playing counter spells. From the looks of it, they're not. They could have another Faithful Mending at the ready. Or just planning to flash back a gaze. So, I'll take the negates anyways, I think. Or we could take Creativity in case we need to combo off twice. Negate would be better at stopping the opponent's combo. But uh, yeah, I think I'm fine going for it here. X equals 2. Could have done X equals 3 to target the opponent's creature as well. And does our opponent have some interaction here? They do not, and our opponent explodes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Yurion, so typically blue-white control. In which case this hand's not bad. Counter spells and card draw is better than drawing or removal. Although Godless Shrine now makes me think they're more on a... Doom Foretold type of Yorion deck with lots of discard and other enchantments that provide value. Can uh, Volcanic Spite their knight if we'd like. But want to keep up interference, so I'll take two damage first. Opponent puts Yorion on hands. So Volcanic Spite. Don't really want to get rid of anything specific. 
If I tap out for Fable, our opponent can tap out for Doom Foretold, but maybe that's still acceptable. And then all these other cards seem fine. And now we just need to start looking for creativity. Tithing Blade deals with the Shaman, that's fine. And a Nightmare makes me discard. Maybe a land can go now. Found a creativity, perfect. So now there's nothing I really want to get rid of. I think the plan is end of turn big score, and then untap and creativity if the coast is clear. Opponent with a Beseech. So we could just counter this. Although I'm thinking our opponent's going for a Doom Foretold. And I guess we can just counter whatever spell they cast off of Beseech. So yeah, we'll let this happen. Opponent getting the Stone Brain, which they don't have the mana to activate. So we should have it here, but I could big score first. And then technically still cast the Interference. But yeah, I can use a treasure to cast Creativity for two, and then target Treasure and Reflection. And that should do it. Did not end up drawing another untapped land, so if it weren't for the Reflection, we might have been one short. And actually, let me make sure to do this manually, so we don't accidentally mess up. Of course, there was still the risk of drawing into one of the combo pieces, which luckily didn't happen. But our deck also has a few answers to artifacts, like Prismari Command could have also destroyed the Stone Brain. And it's also tricky for the opponents to know exactly what to name. I guess they would maybe go for Creativity, but they could also go for one of the payoff cards. And there's a lot of different builds of this Creativity deck, which use different win conditions. So I'm using Atraxa, so then if you name Atraxa, we'll still have our two combo pieces. So yeah, maybe they'll end up naming Creativity. But uh, yeah, it's kind of hard for the opponent to tell exactly what combo deck we're on. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We have uh, somewhat slow hands, but maybe Anger of the Gods as a catch-up mechanism can help. Opponent with Gigantha as companion, often a more aggressive creature deck. So yeah, maybe this can work thanks to the Anger. Okay, Lenore Wastes and Scavenger's Talents, a more of a sacrifice graveyard deck it seems. For now, can play Coast. And Insidious Roots, okay. So far, still a standard deck. Pass with Deduce. Let's see if they have a Tyvar on curve. It's gonna be a Stitcher Supplier instead. Also good to Exile with Anger, so it doesn't trigger once again. And we see Igra, so I guess it is a food combo deck. Igra with double Cauldron Familiar can set up an infinite loop. So those are also good to exile with Anger. Although I'm fine tapping out for Fable, I think. Bonin probably has another uh, Deadly Dispute here. Sacrifice, draw, and mill. Make a food token as well. So they could already play Igra if they have it in hand. And they found a Cauldron Familiar. Which also triggers Insidious Roots. So opponent's definitely going off. Level up Scavenger's Talent to mill themselves. And another Stitcher Supplier. Right now, Anger looks good. Question is whether we want to attack first with a Shaman to make a treasure and give them the chance to block. May not be worth it. Opponent did find another Cauldron Familiar. And our opponent's actually using the talent to bring back Igra now, presumably. Alright. 
And they have double familiar in graveyard, so are we just dead now? They've got a food, bring back familiar. And then, yeah, sacrifice familiar to bring back familiar. That's a loop, and we're just dead. And our opponent can also just mill us with a scavenger's talent for what it's worth. Although I guess at least World Spine Worm will make it so we at least have one card left in library. But yeah, I'm pretty sure the Cauldron Familiar Loop just draining us to death will do it too. Bonus got an army of plants growing ever stronger. Igra getting bigger. Yeah, this is impressive. Turn 4, our opponent's going infinite in a number of ways. We had the anger, but no real great opportunity to cast it. And yeah, double familiar, as we mentioned, goes infinite with Igra. So they didn't even need the scavenger's talent or insidious roots. But I guess it uh, makes it all the more impressive. So yeah, this is going to take a while, but opponent's got infinite. Don't know if we need to sit here for 13 more triggers. So we'll uh, scoop it up here onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got what looks like a keeper, lots of removal, the juice to make our first artifact. And our opponent's got the thought seize. So discard heavy decks will make it a little bit harder to combo since it's hard to keep your creativity in hand for a long time. For now, can play Steam Vents tapped. Don't think we'll need Torture Tower and Fiery Impulse right away. And uh, Fable of the Mirror Breaker is a great draw. So we can deduce end of turn if we don't need to take anything out. And a cash grab, so this may be more of a graveyard combo deck. And yeah, we see Parhelion. So it is a deck featuring Grease Fang. Luckily they don't have it on curve, and now Fairy Impulse and Torture Tower are both enabled to deal 3 damage, which is perfect. So don't really want to tap out for Fable. Gotta keep up at least 1 mana. And then we're not too far from comboing with our own creativity here. Bones got a chariot, a decent backup plan. Although chariot's not gonna kill us too quickly. And I could also take out a single cat so that they have a harder time crewing the chariot. Torture Tower is better at exiling Grease Fang so they cannot get it back. Although I don't necessarily want to sacrifice stuff to bargain, so I think I just Hang on to the Fiery Impulse. The one potential downside of doing this is if her opponent has another Thought Seize, they can take my one answer and then play Grease Fang, and then uh, things might get a little awkward. But now I don't mind Fable. Keep up Impulse. And then next turn we might be able to combo off. Opponent with a Grizzly Salvage. If they have a card like Bitter Triumph in hand, they could also destroy the Worm before it gets a chance to attack. And Fatal push my token. That's fine. So at least they're not crewing the Chariots. No need to Fiery Impulse the one can't. And then definitely getting rid of Steam Vents. Could get rid of another land, although if I hit my land drop I can also channel Crucible to make additional tokens. Which might be the move. So I'll just go for Steam Vents. And also the more we draw, the more we risk drawing into some of our combo pieces. Which is not necessarily where we want to be. Fountain Port could also make a treasure here. Which is maybe safer than making creature tokens that we then target. Opponent's got another cash grab. Still hasn't found a Grease Fang, it seems. But we have one covered. And ideally our opponent taps out here with the Informant to crew the Chariots. 
could take out the cat now, so they don't even get to crew chariots. Seems fine. And then make a pair of 1-1s, one untap creativity for 2. So unless we draw into one of our combo pieces, we should be fine. Alright. Fable transforms. Now I guess what could still happen is our opponent having a fatal push for one of the tokens. So if I can do x equals 3, that's even better. Target both tokens and the clue. That way if they push one of the tokens, we'll still get both Xenagos and World Spine Worm. Go to attackers. And that'll do it. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. We've got what looks like a keeper. No one-man interaction against a Giganta deck, which could be aggro, as we see Bowman Courier. So we're gonna be a little bit behind on board here. But we've got all the tools we need to combo off. And Bowman Courier can accumulate some card advantage. So our opponent's gonna be trying to empty their hand as fast as possible. Which is usually Monorad's MO. Might want to consider main phasing this Volcanic Spite. So we don't run into prowess on Swiss Spear. And then... Either the Deuce or Interference goes. I'm mostly going to be tapping out main phase, although I guess one turn we might be able to keep up the Deuce and Interference. And then Fable makes enough tokens for us to enable creativity. And Torture Tower's not bad. So instead of playing Fable, we could also Torch and keep up some 2-mana instants. Went with a light up the stage, finding a pair of lanes. And goes for the tap to Den right now. Alright, so we might want to take out Beaumont Courier before they get to sacrifice it. Could also just play Fable, which technically blocks the Beaumont Courier. They likely have removal for the token, so they can keep attacking. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of liking the idea of just Torch the Tower. And then pass with Interference for a potential creature, or otherwise we still get to deduce. Opponent puts Giganta in hand, so... Yeah, not the most exciting turn for them. Which means they probably have some burn spells in hand here. Which we'll need to take into account. And another Torch the Tower. So at first I was going to play Tapped Steam Vents plus Fable. Now that we have Torch the Tower, we can play Fable with Torch the Tower backup. And then what we could also end up doing is using Interference to make a Spirit Creature token. If we need an additional token for Creativity. Small chance we can already combo next turn, but don't have my hopes up for it. Ideally, they just animate Den of the Bugbear or cast Giganta, so now the coast is clear. Can uh, torch the etching if we want. But we have two things we can target, so as long as we don't draw Worm or Xenagos, we're fine. So no reason to discard and risk drawing into one of them. X equals two. And there we have it, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, we've got a keeper. Some early interaction, and then big score to set up creativity. Turn one planes initiate, so mono white aggro. Cards like Thalia can be pretty annoying, but might be running Cavern of Souls on human. But we'll wait and see. For now I'll take one.
And yeah, Thalia will certainly counter, since we won't be able to end of turn Volcanic Spite it. Fiery Impulse is a good draw. A card like Adlin could hit pretty hard. Opponent's got a Lieutenant instead. So now I may be tempted to Fiery Impulse the Initiates. And a Boros Elite. Okay, maybe take out the Lieutenant as well while we're at it. And I don't need to discard anything since I want to keep land for a big score. And between the two channel lanes, I guess I will eventually need triple red for creativity. Could see Hodawara being more useful since we already get to two treasure tokens from big score. So if there's no relevant interaction, yeah, big score into creativity could do it. So Lieutenant is fine. I will still need to draw another land, I suppose. And of course, uh, avoid drawing my combo pieces. Double Anger is not bad either, and the creativity. So no land to win right now, but Anger of the Gods is a nice reset button. Could have technically gone for creativity for x equals 1, and then again for x equals 1 on the following turn. And uh, yeah, there's Adlin. So maybe that's worth doing now. The only problem is if I hit World Spine Worm, it is potentially vulnerable to opposing removal. That might also exile it. Cards like Ossification are sometimes played in these builds. If they just play Brutal Cathar, we just take it out, that's fine. If they destroy it without exiling, it goes back. But uh, yeah, if I just go for Fable, we're pretty likely to get there next turn. So that seems like the safer move instead of trying to double creativity. There's a Cavern we mentioned. The Vanguard's pretty good with Adlin as well, and another one. So yeah, Anger of the Gods can clean up everything except Adlin. Can uh, keep the Shaman in play as another target for creativity and then use a treasure. And then we should get there. So no reason to discard and draw and potentially draw one of my combo pieces. And then 30 trample damage should be enough on this board. Alright, and there we have it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a keepable hand, I think. At least interference gets better on the play when we can counter the opponent's 2-drop instead of being behind on board. And then uh, just need to keep hitting our land drops. We've got other 2-mana plays besides our counterspell. And then eventually big score looking for creativity. Well, let's see what we're up against. Blue-green. Picked up another counterspell and a otherworldly gaze. So opponent on a graveyard deck. We'll let that one resolve. Opponent kept everything on top. Let's deduce. And sure, we'll tap out for Fable. Seems early enough in the game where that's safe enough. So what kind of graveyard deck is our opponent playing here? Not quite sure. We'll get rid of Volcanic Spites, keep the counterspells. And then we're just digging for creativity. And 
that can resolve. An opponent countering it to make two treasures. Maybe this is fine and then we'll just interference later and then we can potentially interference twice or just negate. Our Emery can just let it slide and then we'll find removal for it. Cast a big score right now. So it is a Mox Amber Emery build. Might be an Underworld Breach combo deck. Or uh, I guess what would also make sense here is them playing Song of uh, Creation to combo off since they're playing green as well. Either way, we'll uh, big score discard interference now. Yeah, negate's probably our best card in the matchup. Did not find removal, strangely enough. Can still uh, attack, maybe sacrifice or clue to find an answer. Emery threatens to get back a Mox Amber. So I wouldn't mind removing Emery. Should have maybe considered main phase sacking the clue. Although I don't know if we would have had enough to then also cast Creativity for two if we found it. Alright, Volcanic Spike now seems like the better solution. And a land can go. Opponent flashes back a gaze. So yeah, if they cast Song of Creation, I probably have to counter it. And yeah, now we see all the zero drops. Now if our opponent goes Song with counter spell backup, that could be bad. So I think step one is Interference to tap them out. And then negate. If I negate first, I guess your opponent can't offer you can't refuse, and I can still interference afterwards. So maybe this still makes more sense. So we don't waste too many treasures. That works. So no offer you can't refuse in hands, and our opponent refuses to stick around. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have what looks like a keeper. Lots of interaction early. Can discard worm to Prismari command. And the Juice and Prismari Command ways to generate artifacts for us as well. Put on to Red Green, Mutavolt, and Lenor Elves now. Still gonna deduce. So their only green source enter tapped. And then now we could Prismari Command taking out Elves and ditching the World Spine Worm. Or what's maybe better is using Volcanic Spites to get rid of the Worm and keep Prismari Command to generate treasure as well. So I guess we do want to take this out before it taps for mana. And maybe their next creature dies to Volcanic Spite. Could also technically sack the clue, although we might want to keep it for creativity. But yeah, I'm sure our opponent's got more creatures they will play out. It's going to be the Redemption making a beast. Good target for Volcanic Spite. Worm goes on the bottom, so isn't shuffled back. So we're less likely to draw it now too, as opposed to discarding it with Prismari Command. And uh, yeah, get to pass Prismari Command, can deal damage and make a treasure. And then next turn we can Creativity for two. And uh, could even destroy the Chariots with Prismari Command, since we have all the pieces we need. So destroy artifacts and then make a treasure. X equals two. Nice and easy. 
Attack you for 30. And there we have it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have lots of interaction, so sure. We can play as a control deck for quite some time until we're ready to combo. Opponent on green devotion. Definitely taking out the Elvish Mystic. Hopefully they don't have easy access to Nykthos, since they already have four green devotion on the battlefield. And then we got to use Interference while we can, since... Our opponent's going to quickly build up a lot of mana, where they can pay for my conditional counterspells. They have another elf, so it was a triple elvish mystic opener. Okay, so pass it back. Can Shark Typhoon for one here if we'd like. Although I think your eye is worth negating. Uh, or I guess we could still interference. But Interference can also counter bigger creatures like a Cavalier of Thorns next turn. And I'll keep a big score in case we don't need to counter anything. Polucranos does add some Devotion. It's not the biggest concern, if I'm being honest. Unless we can't find our uh, combo right away, then I guess a 4-5 hits pretty hard and is harder to kill. But this seems like a good opportunity to big score. And then I guess I can still reconsider whether or not I counter. Found Fable, Anger, plus another Burn spell could finish off Polucranos. So I think we'll let it resolve for now. Another Anger. I could double Anger, but that uses up all my treasure. So let's just go Fable, keep up Interference, and then we'll see if we need to double Anger next turn, or if we maybe discard them in favor of some of our other combo pieces. All Growth Troll, also good if we can exile it, so it doesn't turn into an enchantment. And I also cannot counter with Interference, so that resolves. Now I guess if they block my Shaman, Anger is still kind of appealing as a way to just deal with Old Growth Troll. Although if I discard Anger, we kind of let them know that we may have another in hand. Maybe I just discard Steam Vents, and then um, we can cast Anger of the Gods second main to clean up. Let's try that. So attack first. And our opponent took it, so now double anger doesn't sound too bad. Alright, everything's gone. We'll have a reflection of Kiki Jiki coming up. And our opponent now plotting a trailblazer. Alright, so can pass a turn, keeping a land in hand to discard to the Volcanic Spite. Although playing land would let me interference with all modes, but yeah, we're not countering the Trailblazer necessarily. More likely to take it out with Volcanic Spite. Another Leyline. Doesn't really seem worth countering, it's only a problem if they draw Nykthos to make mana, but sure, they can have it. And then, end of turn, I don't have anything to do with my mana, sadly. No activated abilities in my lanes. But uh, now we get to play Fable. And then if I activate Reflection, I'll maybe have a treasure left over. So it's a way to maybe store up mana for next turn. And then, do we want to play out Steam Vents? I don't think so. If our opponent plays Trailblazer into another creature, I may Volcanic Spite in response. 
Now Kiora into Trailblazer also draws a card. So, yeah, we could Interference. And then if they play the Trailblazer, they won't have the mana to play a large creature, and then we can still Volcanic Spite. And yeah, now with all the Reflection tokens, we should be able to take over. All right, so we got to see our creativity combo in action, and I'm quite impressed by the deck's performance. The combo seems relatively easy to assemble. There's only some minor inconveniences when you draw the combo pieces, and it's still relatively easy to get rid of them. And then we have enough tools to survive most of the opposing creature decks in the format. Of course, there will be games where the opponent's on the play and curves out with a mono-red deck and uh, kills you before you manage to set anything up. So those games will come along. A deck like Blue-White Spirits is going to be a pretty bad matchup as well, since they have the mix of pressure even at instant speed and then counter spells to both protect their creatures as well as disrupt our combo. So yeah, any deck that can apply pressure and back it up with counter spells is going to be a more difficult matchup. A pure control deck at least allows us to kind of play a different game plan where even if we don't manage to pull off the combo with World Spine Worm, we can still potentially get there with shark tokens from Shark Typhoon or maybe our Fable of the Mirror Breaker can go the distance. So at least we have some other avenues to victory outside of the pure combo and of course if you play this in best of three there's plenty of ways to adjust the deck to potentially beat control with more counter spells or more backup plans and add more removal to have an even better chance against aggro so that's going to do it for today's gameplay I want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day